Today, we're going to be covering how you can apply lambdas functions to pandas data frames. And I'm going to walk you guys through a few different examples and practical applications. Now, lambda function is considered an anonymous function because it doesn't have a return. Now, that might sound confusing, but once we go over these examples, I hope it clears that up. Anyways, I'm going to jump on my computer right now and let's start coding. All right, so I have a Jupyter notebook over here. So let's start with importing some different libraries. So I'm going to import two. So the first one I'm going to import is pandas. So import pandas as pd, then shift enter. And then other library I'm going to be importing is Seaborn. I use it quite a lot in videos. Um, that's why you can grab some data sets pretty easy and I don't have to share them with you guys. So import Seaborn as S and S, great. And then just to see some of the different data sets that are out there, all I have to do is sns.get data set names like this, right? And shows you all these. Now what I'm gonna be using is car crashes, uh, but feel free to use whatever you would like. All you have to do to assign it to a data frame is df equals sns.load data set like this. And then in single quotes, I'm gonna put car underscore crashes. That's right. And I have a typo because I put cat scratches, not car crashes. Then all you have to do, df.head, and I'm gonna put 10 in here so you guys can see what it looks like. And total speeding alcohol not distracted, no previous, insurance premium, insurance losses, and abbreviation of the state. So with that loaded, we can start working on our first uh, Lambda function. Now, what I'm gonna do for my first Lambda function is show you guys two ways to manipulate this total over here. So I'm gonna multiply it by 100, and I'm gonna make two columns. I'm gonna make a normal total version two, and then a total version three. So here's the first way that you can do that. So if you're familiar with pandas, if you want to build out a brand new column or series, all you have to do is write it out over here. So I'm going to say total v2. And then whatever I ended up assigning it to, that'll be a brand new column and it'll be pushed over here to the right. And to write out, all I have to do is df.apply. This is going to tell us that we're going to be adding in a function to this data frame. Then what we're going to do is lambda like this, right? X and you have your colon over here. Here. And now what I like to do is mention what I'm going to be using. So I have total over here. So you're going to say X total, right? And then I'm going to say times 100. And then you have to specify what axis you're using. So I'm going to say axis equals one. Okay. So let's just think about how this was written out. So new column over here, right? DF dot apply. And then you call on your Lambda over here. So what this is saying is for every X in total times that by 100, and we're gonna create a brand new column on it. So watch what happens and put that over there. And I'm gonna show you guys the second method real quick before we do a df.head. Now the second method of it, and I'm just gonna copy this over here and put df.v3. So this time, you can actually specify um, the column outside of the Lambda function. So again, if you're familiar with pandas, you can just do DF and then you can put total in here and then dot apply. And this is letting you know that we're just gonna be targeting that specific total column, right? So then all you have to do is on the inside, put Lambda X and then X times 100, right? So total V3, df, we're grabbing the total column, dot apply, and lambda x, right? We're doing x times 100. So I'm gonna say shift enter over there. Now let's run this data frame again. So I'm just gonna put a df dot head 10. We're gonna scroll down a little bit too. And then you can see we have total v2 and total v3. Uh, and this is just total times 100. So two different ways that you could apply this to a specific one. Um, both of them have their pros and cons. To be honest with you, this one's actually pretty fairly straightforward, just like from thinking about it, okay, you're just looking at DF total and you're applying the Lambda, which is that times 100, especially if you're gonna be building these out in interview questions, you don't wanna trip up over things. Although this one isn't bad either, um, but those are two different ways that you can do uh, your first function. 
Now we're going to be taking a look at if else. So for this one, I'm going to be looking at the insurance premium on this one over here. So um, I'm going to call this DF over here, like always, and then inside over here. So what I'm going to do is say DF and I'm going to classify these different types. So I'm just going to say insurance premium like this and then underscore type. Okay. And then that's going to equal DF. And I'm going to again, copy kind of what I did over here and just put DF insurance premium. Uh, so that way we were just looking at that specific series. So have that over there, right? DF insurance premium. And then what we're going to do is dot apply. So dot apply, and then let's start writing out our lambda. So lambda x. Okay, now we have to start writing our if else. So how an if else works and lambda is, let's write our first classification. So I'm going to put high. And then after that, you're going to say if x is greater than 1000, right? You're going to say else medium, and then if x is greater than 800, else low. So let's just walk through this specifically. So we're grabbing insurance premium, which is right over here. We're running our lambda function. So it's going to be considered high if x is over a thousand. So insurance premium is over a thousand. So this won't be high. This one will be, right? It's a medium if it's over 800. So no, this already gets classified as high. This will be a medium. 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 And then it's a low. It's under 800. Well, this is under 800. So that should be a low. So all I'm going to do is shift enter, right? And then let's grab our DF dot head and we throw that in there. And you can see the insurance premium type is specified here on the side. Uh, so you do see this quite a bit and um, it's pretty easy once you kind of get down the formatting of it. So now I'm going to show you guys how you can sum up two uh, different columns through a Lambda function and you can do more than just summing them. I just feel like summing is pretty easy. And what I'm going to do is sum up speed and alcohol. So I'm just going to call this DF S P A L something like that. I don't know spall. And then this is going to be equal to df dot apply. And then we're going to build out our Lambda function again, right? So Lambda X. Okay. So now if you remember earlier, right, I could specifically call what column I wanted. All you have to do is the same thing over here. So we have X and then we're going to have speeding. And then we're going to say plus X. And then we're going to say alcohol, alcohol, Right. And then all I have to do at the very end is axis equals one. I'm going to shift enter that. And then I'll grab my head. And you can see um, that we have the summation, right? Seven plus five, 12, seven plus four, we have 11. And you'll just have to believe me that all this math that works on here. So you can call multiple within your Lambda function. Just make sure that you specify specifically uh, what you would like to run your calculations based off of. Now I'm gonna show you guys a few different ways that you could update columns and we're gonna be taking a look at this abbreviation over here. So to do that, DF dot abbreviation, right? And what I wanna do is change these from uppercase to all lowercase. So all I have to do is DF over here. I'm gonna specify this abbreviation again, which I guess I could have just copied that specifically. I'll just copy that, right? Uh, that lets us know we're targeting that specifically. We're going to do dot apply. Now you're going to build out your Lambda function like we've been doing. So Lambda X, and then I'm going to put X dot lower, which this allows you to change all this from uppercase to lowercase. So we run that, no errors. And then if you grab this DF dot head 10, you can see everything in that is now lowercase. So you can also, instead of building out brand new columns like I've done in the past, you can apply stuff directly within here. Uh, but I'll show you also what's kind of cool is you can change it within a column too. Uh, so I'm going to copy a lot of this over here and paste it. And let's say for a few different states, I wanted to actually put it 
capitalized. Let's say like Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. So we can actually apply kind of like what we did up over here with this if, and watch how we do this. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna remove this x dot lower, right? And I'm gonna put x dot upper, and I'm gonna say if x in, and then let's start specifying our states. So I said Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, right? And then you have to always have if else. So I'm gonna say else X, right? So what this is telling me right now is I wanna make these four states upper, right? If the state is Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, else nothing is gonna happen. So you can specify specifically what you wanna get changed, which is very powerful, right? So shift over there and then df.head, run that. And now if you see Florida, it is capitalized. And if I change this to df like 15, right? So we can see Georgia as well, right? Georgia is capitalized. And the same thing will be happening with South Carolina and North Carolina if I expanded this one out. You can also do the same thing with numbers, right? So I'm gonna take a look at this spall that I built out earlier, right? So df spall equals df spall dot apply. So what we're gonna take a look at on this one, let's say this 3.599, let's say I wanted to subtract three from it for some reason. So I'm gonna say lambda x, and then what I'm gonna say is x minus three if x equals, and I'm just gonna put this 3.599, else x, okay? So that if there's anything else with 3.599, that'll be impacted, but just, I don't think there's gonna be in this data frame, just kind of an easy example to show you. Right, no errors there. And then let's just do our df.head15 one more time. And now you can see that's been impacted. It is now 0 0.59. Hope you found this video helpful and now you are familiar with Lambda functions. If you are, make sure to subscribe to the channel as it does help it grow. By the way, I have a full video series over here where I go over Python interview questions and I do use Lambda quite a bit over there. So maybe you can practice those questions and solve it 